Hi, my name is Justin Garcia. I'm a licensed acupuncturist and the owner at Studio 36 Acupuncture and Integrative Medicine, located in Glendora, California. For today's class, I'm going to introduce you to one of five animals in a series of Qigong movements that is called Hua To Wu Qing Shi, or in very simply English, just called the Five Animal Frolics or Five Animals Qigong. Now, the animal I'm going to introduce today is the crane, the posture of the crane. It's a very elegant movement and very challenging as well. So, we're going to take you through. And so the first thing that we're going to need to know about the crane posture is that the, we have a hand we call a mudra, right? So each animal has its own hand positioning that we need to learn as we go through the positions. And so that is the first thing we'll do. So for the crane, we're going to learn that the crane, just as any bird, has feathers, right? So what we want to do is we want to lift our pinky and our index finger up away from the center two fingers, right? So be careful, it is not a curling in of the ring finger, the middle finger, but rather extending the pinky and the index finger up. Okay? So to begin the crane, the first part is we need to get a slightly wider than hip width stance. And then we're going to place one hand over the other. Now I'm going to start with my right hand on top of my left, as such. And then we're going to slightly sink down. And then we're going to raise our body up. and the fingertips pointing forward, bringing the arms up next to the ears as we take a deep breath in. And then we're going to exhale. And now here's where the feathers are going to come out. And I'm going to shift my weight over to my right leg. And then I'm going to extend my left leg back behind me. As I do that, I'm going to bring my arms back, palms facing up arching my back, bringing my shoulders back, and balancing on one leg. Right, so then we're going to bring the leg down. Now we're going to repeat the motion on the other side. And when I come down, I like to switch hands. So now I'm going to bring my left hand on top of my right. So I also sink down. And then I'm going to raise up, bringing my arms next to my ears, fingertips pointing forward, big stretch. And then we're going to come down, pay attention to the fingers as we shift our weight onto the other side. Bringing my right leg back, my hands behind me, palms facing up. chest out, back is slightly arched, and then we come back down. Okay, so one key factor to being successful, it's specifically talking about that second portion of that exercise, when we get up onto one leg and we're looking for our balance, we find it that you have to really commit to this and not be concerned of falling forward. Of course, we're not leaning too far forward, but as we bring our leg back and our arms come back, our upper body will lean forward naturally to counterbalance, right? But in order to really secure it, this is where we have to really bring our shoulders back, open the chest, squeezing the scapula, the shoulder blades together. As the leg comes up, palms facing up, 
And here we're able to secure our balance. If your shoulders are down, then there's still a lot of room for to become wobbly. So in our second part of the exercise, right, a full commitment with the shoulders back, chest open, and we can find a nice stable position. Okay, so let's take you through that again. So the first position of the crane, standing with our feet slightly hip width apart, right? So we come down, I place my right hand on top of my left, and then I rise, bringing my arms next to my ears, big stretch up, and then I come down, I'm shifting my weight to the right leg, bringing my left leg back, palms facing up, arching my back, open the chest, and then I come back down. I place my left hand on top of my right, I sink down, and then I rise up. Fingertips pointing forward, then we come down, shifting your weight to the other side, and we repeat. So, for the beginning part of the exercise, the first portion, we need to make sure that our whole body is active in the exercise, right? So it's not just the arms coming up, the arms coming down. We want the whole body to sink and then we rise up, right? So if we're already standing with our legs relatively straight, we don't have much room to go up, right? So we really want to emphasize that we have space to grow and also space to sink, right? So we need to sink down. So we sink down before we go back up. And then even at the very top, before we come back down, giving ourselves a little bit of room to kind of add an additional stretch and coming back down, okay? So one more time. So remember, for the crane, our feet are just about over the hip width of a, a stance, and our feet are parallel, right, are on the same plane, toes pointing forward. Okay, so to begin, crossing my right hand on top of my left, and I sink down into my stance, and then I rise up. And then we're gonna come down, shifting your weight to the right, bringing your left foot back, palms facing up, scapula, chest open, and then we come back down. Left hand on top of the right, I sink down, and then I rise up. I shift my weight to the right, I bring my left foot back, Palms facing up, chest open and extended, and then I come back down. Okay, so another key point that I would like to mention before we move on to the second portion of the crane is that when we sink down, at the very beginning, we want to make sure that we sink down and as, we're, as if we're sitting onto a stool, right? When we sink down, we don't want to go forward. Sinking down does not mean pushing our, our knees forward, okay? So this would be a very bad move and in the long run, it also will cause discomfort and possible injury to our knees. So as we sink down, it's as if we're sitting down onto a bench or a stool that is just behind us, right? So here we say opening the qua, in Chinese it's called the qua, 
as we sit down onto the stool. Right? So then we come up. Right? And then we'd come back down. Okay? So when we sink down, looking from the front, that we come down into a stool seated position, not shifting our knees forward. Okay? Alright, this is very important. So that is a brief introduction, and I think you should start to be able to follow along with that beginning portion of the crane. So now I'll introduce you to the second portion of the crane. Once again, also working on balance, uh, but this time it will be with a one-legged stance with the other leg rising up in front. So once we've completed the first portion of the crane, we go directly into the second. Now don't forget your fingertips with the feathers on your fingers, right? Okay, so now for the second portion, we're going to begin by once again sinking down and we're going to bringing our fingertips inwards and we're going to shift my weight, I'm shifting my weight to my right side and then I'm going to rise up halfway, so I mean halfway with my arms, halfway with my leg. Then I'm going to sink down and I'm going to do it a second time, but this time I'm going to do a full raising of my arms and lifting my knee as high as I can go. And then I'm going to come back down. So then I just repeat that on the other side. So a few points that we should pay attention to. Um, I think the first one also is um, our balance and our standing on one leg. And this goes for our first position as well. When we sink down or when we stand up on one leg, we never really want to fully extend and lock that knee and that hip. And that goes for the arms also, even when we're reaching all the way up. We always leave about, you can say like 5%, 10%, meaning that we never completely lock up our joints. We always, we only stretch and extend by still leaving about 5 to 10% that if you were to go, that's how much further before you would lock, lock your elbow to fully extend it, okay? So we never want to fully extend. As we rise up, this leg comes up, but this, my knee on my left side here, right, still remaining like 5%. If I lock it all the way up, now this is my knee is locked, right? So I find it that another thing for your balance, when you're completely locked up, now you're just like a steel pole, right? And so either your steel pole is dug deeply into the ground so that you're not going to fall, or, right, otherwise you have some sort of support. But if you leave your joints slightly open, then it's like you have a, uh, a few different sections and each one has a cushion. So this cushion allows for a little bit of movement, a little bit of room for adjusting. When you're a straight, completely locked up bar, you've only got either left, right, front, or back. Okay? So, as far as our uh, function and for looking for our balance, uh, the functionality of it, this is a pretty good example as to why. So you don't lock your knee completely, right? Keeping it just ever so slightly, 5%, still have a little bit of room, and you will see that this a little bit of room will allow for movement and allow for correction of your balance so allowing you to find that stability okay so our second portion of the crane right we bring the fingers in 
and then we're going to open. So just looking at the arms, we want to open. We want to try to open from the chest out. And so we rise up with the L shoulder, the elbow, and then the wrist follows behind. And then we're only going to go about halfway, so I say halfway, about halfway up the chest as opposed to a full extension here. So the first movement we go up halfway. So we start by raising and opening from the shoulders. The elbow comes up and then the wrist follows. Now before your wrist hits the peak of that midway line, we're going to want to start to reverse the direction. Okay. So what do I mean? If I look at, if this is the midway for this first portion, I rise, bringing my shoulder, elbow. Now, my elbow's already reached it. So now I start to sink my shoulder, drop my elbow, and as I drop my elbow, it gives room for my wrist to complete that motion, and then I drop it back down. So the arm is also going to come in slightly as we come back down. And then here, before we get to the bottom, right, same. The arms, the wrists are coming in last, but then the fingertips, before the fingertips come in, the elbows, the shoulders, the elbows have already started to make their way back out. So in essence, it's kind of creating like this wave-like motion, right, from the arms. Starting from the center, working its way out. Okay, so here, shifting my weight to the right, and I sink down, and then I rise up partially with my, lifting my knee, right, and then my arm's only coming up that halfway, and then we come back down. Right, and then on the second rotation here, we're gonna come up, and then come back down. Right, so the second time we're gonna come up, right, bringing the backs of the hands together towards each other, making a really big opening our rib cage here. Allowing for a nice deep breath and on the second time as well. Then we're going to try to raise the knee as high as you can go. Right. So everybody's going to be different. So do what is what feels comfortable for you within your limits. Okay. So even if your arms cannot reach all the way up, you go is within the directions as high as you can go. If this is as high as you can go, then that's as high as you go today. You practice on a daily basis. I'm pretty confident that you will start to increase your range, okay? But what we don't want to do is we never want to compromise our structural integrity or the position or compromise the instruction in order to try to make anything look like what you want it to look like, right? So we don't want to go through shortcuts just to try to achieve a look. It's better to follow the directions and only go this far if that's as far as you can go, right? Rather than trying to compromise by shifting your hips or doing other things, okay? So that's very important. Maintain and do what's comfortable for you within your limits, but by following the directions, okay? All right. So let's put it together, uh, the second portion. So we come down, shift my weight, up, down, up, and back down. Now I change my, shifting my weight to the other side, repeat. time
Okay, so now that is the second portion of the crane. So now what I'd like to do is take a moment and then we're going to go from the beginning of the introduction, then we have an opening form, and then we'll run through the crane, the first position of the crane, and the second position, and then there's a closing where we bring everything together. Okay, so please follow along with our feet together, hands at our side. We take a moment to clear our mind. Calm your breathing. Okay, so follow along. We inhale, and then we exhale, and we slightly sink down, bending the knees, opening the quad. We shift our weight to the right. We step out with the left foot. Turn your palms facing out and raise your arms halfway up. Turn your palms facing in, elbows out, bringing your palms inward, palms facing down, and then we press down and slightly sink downwards. We repeat this two more times. Inhale as you come up. Exhale as you come down. Inhale up. Exhale down. Okay, so we're going to make a slightly wider stance. Bringing our right hand on top of our left, we sink down. Inhale up. Shift your weight to the right. Left leg comes back, exhale. Place your foot down, left hand on top, sinking down. Inhale up. Shift your weight to the left, exhale. Place your right leg down. Right hand on top, we're going to repeat one more time, sinking down, inhale up, shift your weight to the right, exhale, foot comes down, left hand on top, sinking down, inhale up. Shift your weight to the left. Exhale. Good. Fingertips come together. Shift your weight to the right. Inhale up. Exhale down. Inhale up all the way. Exhale. Switch sides. Inhale up. All right. Exhale when we come down. One last time. Back on the other side. Inhale up. Exhale down, inhale up, exhale, inhale up, exhale down, and then deep breath up, and exhale. And to close, we bring our palms out and we gather, bringing our palms facing in 
Exhale, palms facing down. Now we're going to take three big inhalations as we gather the chi. Exhale, sinking down. Second time. Body rises up. Body sinks down. Last time. Inhale up. Exhale. Bring your feet hip width. Place your right hand just below your navel and your left palm on top of the back of your right hand. Make sure your elbows are gently hugging your sides. We stand, allowing the chi to return. We stand with our knees slightly bent our qua open, slightly sitting on the high stool. The tailbone is gently dropped. The abdomen is relaxed. The chest is relaxed. Shoulders dropped. And the chin lightly tucked in, raising the, the back of the skull, elongating the spine and the cervical vertebrae. We allow our tongue to just rest gently on the roof of our mouth, just behind our teeth. And we take nice, deep, natural breaths. And feel the chi circulating throughout your body. stand for as little as one or two minutes or you can stand as long as 10, 20, 30 minutes. Once you're ready, we warm our hands together. And then give yourself a nice gentle face lift. Up one Two, gently raising your skin, feeling the warmth of your hands over your face, and down the back of your neck, down the back and sides of your body, down the back of your legs, down to your toes, and we come up the inside, Rub your stomach, rub your shoulders. Right. So that's the end of the crane, which is one of the animals of the five animal Qigong series. Okay, so stay tuned for the other animals for the five animals Qigong or the Hua To Wu Qing Xi. Be well. Take care.